if you are entering 2021 and you still don't have, you know, a long list of New Year's resolutions, that is okay. If you are entering 2021 and you still can't say 2021 is my year for sure, like the rest of your friends, that is okay. If you're entering 2021 and you just want to leave this video and not watch it, that is not okay. Please stay. Hi everyone. So this video is a sequel to the video that I did earlier this year. Well, not this year. 2020 in June. If you have not watched the last video, I'm going to leave the link above here and in the description as well so you can check out either. In this video, I am going to be given four pieces of advice or if you want to call it resolutions or challenges, that's another way to put it. But I think that these are four pieces of advice that will help you cope with the psychological impact aftermath of 2020. The aim of the last video was to celebrate all our efforts during this hard period regardless of our expected productivity levels. The aim of this video is very similar, to commend all of our efforts during this unprecedented period. Undeniably, much of 2020 was negative. However, this video will draw attention to the positive aspects of this experience and hopefully refuel our hope. The first question that I asked was kind of a warm-up. 2020 was a crazy year. So. I thought that we would get that out of the way by acknowledging that in a question. Using one color, describe 2020. I would use red because it was a year full of hatred, strife, burning, fire, but at the same time, passion. The Black Lives Matter movement was something that was defining for me. Red because of the amount of blood that was shed this year. Also, red because of the amount of love shed this year. Red reminds me of danger. Kobe Bryant's helicopter crash, COVID-19 seismic activity increasing in St. Benson, the mini tornado in Barbados. There were so many different things that were just considered dangerous. I would describe 2020 as the color gray because gray is a mixture between black and white. 2020 brought with it a lot of loneliness and clouds of depression. We're just shrouded in mystery to be honest. It has no script and you're just going along in the flow. Yellow because yellow is traditionally the color of hope. In the middle of a pandemic I've had to hold on to hope. I think 2020 was a year we all we all needed. We all need the sun and the sun is yellow. <laughs> the color white because the color white represents unity. In 2020 we had to come together, not literally of course, because we had to exercise social distancing. But we had to come together to defeat the coronavirus. Black because it's been a really difficult year. I lost friends and family as well, but that was quite sad. In addition to that, the events which took place this year just made it even more difficult. For me, it was like colorless because it felt like so many things were stripped away, so many things were laid bare. It also felt like so much effort needed to be put into every single aspect of living. Number one, allow yourself to mourn 2020. A lot of people are like, this is 2021, time for a new me, time for a new this, time for a new that. And that's great. It's good that a lot of people are motivated by the prospect of a new year, new opportunities, new experiences and whatnot. We are currently still in the process of figuring out how 2020 has changed us. A lot of people still don't know what 2020 did for them. You don't need to feel pressured. You're still allowed to analyze what is occurring within yourself, within your growth journey. Allow yourself the gradual departure from the year. You don't need to enter the new and forsake the old, if that makes sense. You don't need to write 2020 off as yet. It's okay if you're still grieving for whatever happened in, in your story in 2020. Grieve for the person you lost, grieve for the parts of you that left. For some of us, it wasn't things. For some of us, it was people. It is completely acceptable to take your time to continue mourning. So that's the first point. The next question that I asked was, what are you leaving behind? What will you miss? What has died? What is no longer a part of you? What are you hoping will be no longer a part of you as you enter into this new year? State something that you are leaving behind in 2020. False expectations that the world is going to just work out the way it's supposed to. Persons who I thought were friends because 20th century gave me time to like really evaluate my friendships and relationships that I had. 
Something that I'm leaving behind in 2020 are excuses. Sanity. <laughs> I graduated from Sir Arthur this year, so that's definitely staying in 2020. I would not like to revisit 90% of the things that happened. I am not going to focus on anything negative for 2021. God is bigger than my problems. I see a lot of negatives in situations before I see the positive or before I even try to see the positive. So one thing I want to leave behind in 2020 is that kind of mentality. Considering everything that happened this year, for me, maybe it's a little bit ungrateful when I allow myself to wallow. Next piece of advice, in spite of it being quite overt and obvious, a lot of us are not doing it. Allow yourself to feel pride. Feel proud of you. I think 2020 really showed us our resilience as a people, as individuals, as a society. I know a lot of people who really did not believe that they were making it out of 2020. We are not stronger than we give ourselves credit for. I think that it's necessary to recognize that you made it out of such a tumultuous, hectic, tedious, cumbersome, anxiety-filled, depression-laden period. Take the time to really be proud of you, marveling at how, how, how much strength you had that you did not even know. Take the time to recognize that, dwell on that for a bit. Let it cement. With that being said, what month in 2020 are you most proud of? The month of January 2020, it was so thrilling to me because that is when the Red House in Trinidad and Tobago, the seat of our government reopened. The month I'm most proud of would definitely be January because one is my birth month, so I was thankful for being able to see a new year. In addition to that, back then things were just much better. It was the month that my first ever theatrical production premiered. April, because I used April to get my life back on track. I fixed up my sleep schedule. I was spending a lot more time with my family. Me, because that's when I finished school. July because Cape big exam being able to get through that through the pandemic with all the mental stress I think now is probably my most proud moment. Covid wasn't too bad in St. Lucia as yet so we were able to go out with our friends we were able to do like small parties. In my honest opinion that was the best month that I've had in 2020. That course that I told you I started back in the last video I actually successfully completed it in the month of August. October I feel like that is the month where I really began to grow. November, not because I was born in that month, but I was, so let's make it a great month. <laughs> November, because of the amount of focus I showed throughout the entire month. Because I felt like I was very productive. I started learning a new language. I actually started, you know, fighting and working towards getting back on track with my self-growth. I learned how to not let anger determine my actions. I enjoyed baking cheesecake <laughs> and all the reviews I've gotten from persons I've sold for. No complaints whatsoever. I believe they all had a part to play in molding the person I am today. I'm just grateful that I um, <laughs> made it through all 12 of them to be honest. I also asked another question. Excluding yourself, name someone that you are proud of for making it through 2020. That portion of this will be at the end. I mean, you could go to the end, but you know, it'd be nice if you watched the entire video. The next piece of advice, the next challenge is let yourself experience 2021. I'm not like trying to frighten anybody, but 2021 is gonna have challenges too. And a lot of stuff that happened in 2020 are gonna still have, be having consequences. 2021 is not gonna be a magically easier year, but I want us to allow ourselves to live 2021. Much of 2020 was, was just waiting for it to finish. Much of 2020 was yearning for another year. Much of 2020 was wanting it to just disappear. I don't want us to spend 2021 like that. If we're constantly living like, I want this moment to pass, I want this moment to pass, we are never going to truly experience any moments. We're not going to remember, we're not going to be able to emotionally connect to it. And I think that 2021 is the, is the year for us to live based on the lessons that we learned, because we did learn a lot in 2020. Whatever has been revealed to us, 2021 is the year to allow these things to be set in motion. In 2020 also taught us that we really do not know what's gonna happen tomorrow. We all don't know. Let me not rush it. Let me not rush it. So based on that question, what I'm going to be asking now, the next question that I asked you guys, what is something that you will do different this year? 
I'd like to improve um, my emotional fortitude to be able to take whatever comes with grace and to just be at peace and to be calm in the face of adversity or potential adversity. I will try to stop doubting myself and when I make a decision that I think is best for me, I will go with that. I just want to work harder and be more focused, disciplined. I would hope to be more courageous. Mm, try to be in the Bible some more, like read the Bible some more. To launch a business in an area that I really love, which is interior design. Possibly read at least two books before the year ends. Procrastinate a lot less. Be available to the people that matter to me most. I also want to spend some more time with friends and family. Something I will do differently in 2021 is take better care of myself and my health. And be more appreciative of the things I have in my life. I definitely want to put myself first. And just like, give myself credit for what I've been doing and what I am doing. I hope I do a lot of things differently. <laughs> I'm not sure if I actually will. I'm just gonna summarize this point in one word. Grace. Extend grace to yourself. Giving yourself grace is permission to forgive your mistakes, lapses in judgment, and hurtful behavior because no one is perfect. What this means, I feel like, is empathizing with the version of you that entered 2020. Well, not even 2020, just in the past. The version of you that entered whatever year that happened in the past that you were beating yourself up about. Direct your focus to actually say, I want to go after extending grace to myself. Allowing myself to be human. Allowing myself to do the wrong thing and learn from it. Entering into 2021, that's very much something that we have to continue. Understanding that I do not have all the answers. In order to get some of these answers, at least the answers that are putting into my growth, putting into my being, I have to go through these experiences to learn these things. The person you are right now, you might not do something you did in the past, but that's only because you did it in the past. In every moment, we are adding to our repertoire of knowledge. We are adding to our repertoire of self-awareness. Empathize for your younger self. Empathize for your struggling self. Empathize with your growing self. Extend grace. Extend gargantuan amounts of grace to yourself. You the last question that I'm asking, this is the last question that I asked in the last video as well, in one word. How are you hoping 2021 to be? Different. Normal. It's rewarding. Fruitful. Success filled. Fun. Surprise. A blessing. Unifying. Restoration. Exceptional. Blessed. I hope 2021 is better. Better. It's better. Better. A lot better. Amen. 2020 opened my eyes to a lot. A lot was revealed to me. But I want to continue along that line 2021. I think there's so much more that can be revealed to me. I want 2021 to be what 2020 was revealing. Okay guys, I think we're at the end of this video. If you participated in this video, again guys, I am eternally grateful to you. Thank you so, 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 so much. I hope this video was an encouragement to a lot of you guys. Number one, allow yourself to mourn for 2020. Number two, allow yourself to feel pride for yourself. Number three, allow yourself to experience 2021. And number four, extend grace. Extend eternal grace to yourself. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to share, comment, and like. Instagram, I'll leave that below as well. Just a reminder that the shout outs are gonna be after I say my ending, so. Just stay for that if you are interested, especially if you are being shouted out in a shout out. I think you should stay. Okay, bye bye. Ash spoke. My mother. My elder sister. If I had to pick a name, I would choose either Khadija Halliday or Sidoni Weed. My mom. Being a single parent and also being self-employed, she did not work for three months. However, she was still in good spirit. She was still joyful and cheerful. She brought me a lot of joy and in her I saw a brave woman. And to my mommy, I'm proud of you and I love you. Lisa, because she has really made progress, especially with her TikTok. Although I know that every day she wants to 
she wants to stop i want to encourage her to continue pushing because she's doing amazing my younger sister jada through all that we've been through she's really remained strong and is pushing through to finish university and i'm very very proud of her i am most proud of my three children it has been a tough year for them and they have been resilient they have each fought and triumphed in their own individual ways and they, each of them has have made me very proud my three closest friends so that's khadija holiday tyrese alexander and sanjeja teachers at usc some of these are my colleagues who transitioned quickly seamlessly and sacrificially to fully online teaching during the pandemic I'm really proud of them. I'm very proud of my best friend Lizette. She has come a long way. She lives in the South, so she hasn't been able to see many of her friends, the people that she loves. She also got into university. She did school online and she did very well. So I'm very proud of her for that. My older brother, um, Darren, I'm very proud that he has made it through 2024. All of the ups and downs. And I mean, he's a differentist, so. It was expected, but I'm still very proud. 